Welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. Today we're going to be looking at ways to develop a, a, a graded wash and how that graded wash is uh, useful to transmit certain effects of light. Light bounce, uh, glow in the shadows, and a feeling of movement across the surface. Our location is in Gloucester at the um, railroad marina in Gloucester which is a it's a large site that is reconstructing boats of various sizes and uses and today we're up on a Saturday morning a lot of the workmen are not around but a few are working on their uh, pleasure boats um, touching up the paint and um, fixing things that need to be fixed and getting ready to put it back into the water so they can enjoy the summer so we've happened on a, a scene that's backlit. In other words, the light is coming from behind. And this suggests to me to do a scene of a, a, a dark motif on top of a lighter background. The lighter background composed of sky and some distant trees and boats and a foreground of a, of a, of a light warm color becoming darker as it comes closer to me. So I'm starting off with some big graded washes. Graded wash means that we're uh, transforming the wash either as it moves up in the painting or down in the painting or left to right. For example, in the wash of the sky, you'll notice it's a subtle transition, but it's going from a bluer aspect in the upper left corner uh, to the uh, warmer aspect in the lower right-hand corner. And while by itself it, it, it uh, maybe doesn't look like much, but when we put a subject on top of it, a uh, uh, silhouetted subject of boats and figures, this graded wash will have a more powerful effect. And if we combine that with other graded washes, we can really communicate a feeling of light bounce, which is light bouncing from a surface up into another uh, glow in the shadows. We can also... Um, create a feeling of depth in the painting from near to far. This foreground wash that I'm applying now is going to help to do that in the final painting. So I'm working to make it darker and warmer in the foreground uh, by continuing to add color here, <clears throat> as well as uh, keeping it light in the back. So this transition, I want it to be um, a smooth transition, but a dramatic transition. And my watercolor plan is to use, uh, when I cast shadows from objects, I'm going to ask them to kind of blend in the lower third of the painting so that they uh, join with this darker layer. So anyway, it's dried off now, and I can approach the paper, a dry paper, and start to think about brush strokes uh, to create the shapes of boats, ladders, tables, figures, masts of ships, lines, etc. Very much done in a calligraphic manner. But when I have larger areas, including figures and the, the boat itself and the shadows, I'm going to work to make them transition. Uh, I mean, work to use a graded wash. Uh, in the, I'm working on the large boat area now. And you can see... Um, that it is transitioning a bit. It's going to get darker towards the bottom, stay a little cooler on top, a little brighter on top, as though light is bouncing back up into the uh, front, uh, the side of the boat. As we add darks to that, uh, the dark of some color changes, but uh, largely shadows, that effect will become stronger. And we're doing this while the paint is wet so that we get a really soft transition, a gradual transition. And thus the term graded wash is changing over the course of the wash in a gradual manner. <clears throat> this could be done with dry layers, but uh, watercolor asks us to kind of take advantage of the media and use water to blend the colors. So doing it while the paint is wet gives you a different transition. I feel a more beautiful transition, and I'm really trying to exploit, exploit that as I build up the 
the large shape of the boat. Even in the smaller shapes, uh, if I notice that I can add a dark to make a transition or add some water to make a lighter transition, um, I do that. I find that the, the graded wash is really a, a thing of beauty by itself and really helps to uh, give the scene more, more interest and also works to give the scene a greater accuracy when it comes to describing uh, the effect of light on the scene. The day was, uh, was a good day. We had a, one of the best days we've had so far in terms of temperature. It was a bit hot and we are a bit exposed uh, as there's no real shade trees or overhanging structures here. We're kind of out on the asphalt painting away. We could stand underneath some of the boats and get a little shade that way. And uh, we ended up doing that. Sometimes when you're at a location like that, that prevents you from, or that makes it difficult to stand and face your subject and have shade at the same time, I will almost always opt for shade. And perhaps I'll do my drawing uh, in front of the subject, give myself a, a sense of the figures, and then I'll move to the shade, which is not always in line with my subject, to do the painting. And then if I through the painting if I need a piece of information I'll walk back out in front of my subject and find that information and return to working on the painting uh, at a distance or at a, at a location that's not directly in line with my painting. This is uh, not only beneficial in that you can stay in the shade and, and make better judgments as to values and colors but also there's less distraction, that distraction being the subject. <laughs> Ironically, uh, when we stand in front of our subject or sit in front of our subject, we're constantly measuring our painting against the subject and adjusting and measuring and adjusting. And that sort of back and forth is quite distracting and quite um, mm, a little bit detrimental to the painting process. If you're being distracted by your by the measuring and uh, matching of uh, colors and strokes to your scene, you spend less time looking at your painting and relating things that are going on in the painting. You're also less sensitive to opportunities that happen in the course of a watercolor. And um, so my feeling is to keep my attention with what's going on in the painting in terms of the washes, adjusting the washes, and um, being sensitive to what's happening in front of my eyes. So I do relate it to my subject, I'll look at my subject, but much less than is typical. I try to give more and more attention to what's happening within the painting and relating the parts of the painting to the subject. Um, but relating the parts of the painting more to what's actually starting to evoke itself in the painting. As you can see now, there's a nice combination of shapes on the left side. I'm starting to think about um, shoring up the right side, making it a little more of an uh, uh, important statement on the right side to drive the attention back into the painting. I felt leaving it empty the, my eye was traveling out of the painting. So this is all invented. Um, and another figure that's closer to us, some things in a bucket, some cast shadows. Um, but really what this is doing is to visually move us back towards that ladder, towards the hull of the boat and the figures that are in the shadows. So I might not have, I might have missed this opportunity had I been uh, really following my subject uh, closely and not really uh, sensitive to what was happening, being sensitive to what was happening in the painting. Well, you can see it's evolving very quickly. The lower th two-thirds of the painting is, for the most part, uh, done. I'll make some adjustments and uh, some refinements to the major shapes, but I can already see the painting 
uh, in my mind's eye in a finished state. So this gives me more confidence, gives me a way to check my progress and not go beyond what I really want to do. And that's important because, <clears throat> as you know, when we're painting, we're sort of in an emotional state. We're making applications. We're trying to be gestural and expressive. We're trying to respond to the changing light. Uh, we're trying to do a lot of things at once. And that takes a high amount of concentration and energy, focus. And it's natural to get um, rather involved uh, on, a, on a psychological and emotional level in the painting. So if something starts to go awry, we tend to panic. If something is um, coming out to our expectation, we kind of revel in that. And uh, it's easy to, sometimes in that case, to go beyond what we really wanted to do and, and um, um, just keep adding because we have momentum. So, um, well, you can see it coming into being. Now, look how the graded washes are starting to affect the scene. In the hull of the boat, you can see that gradation from a cooler color to a warmer color at the bottom, a lighter to a darker hue at the bottom. The shadows are going from a little darker aspect where they are coming off the object to a little paler aspect as they come forward. The graded wash of the sky, you can see that subtle transition is really making the light feel like it's coming from the upper right-hand corner. And uh, in the foreground, that's having a big effect on this sort of raking light across the, the surface of the painting. So these were planned, uh, not accidental, and uh, I feel they expect they, they show the value of using a graded wash, trying to, rather than paint a flat wash, um, which is easy to do in watercolor, easier than a graded wash, I look to make a gradation. I find that that imparts uh, several things. One is a feeling of the light bouncing back up into the subject. You can see that a bit on the hull of the boat as it's going to dry. Um, it also describes the movement of light across the surface. You can see that on the ground, that tra transition from near to far. And it also creates um, a feeling of, of glowing color in the shadows. We see the blues a little more clearly. We feel the warm tones a little more. Even though they're tonally very close, um, we can feel a, a sort of glow in the color, which I really love in watercolor. What I've done just now is a bit of a glaze. The painting, or the hull had dried, and I felt it was a little too cool. I wanted to warm, up, warm it up a bit, and part of this is to, uh, again, express this warm day, this sunlit day. And another function of that is to make the, the blues that are going to be in my two figures jump a little more. If I can put a complementary hue next to... Um, that blue, in this case orange, it was a glaze of orange, it's going to make the blues uh, pop a little more and uh, we'll enjoy the color aspect a little more. So I continue to add details to the structure which was, as I said, I felt it was nearly complete and as I do that more light comes out. Uh, the details I'm being trying to be very selective, just do a few that I uh, envision will work, and um, so on. And you can tell I keep returning to this center of interest, and then I work uh, outward. So I, I add a few more rich colors to that center of interest, a face, a hat, uh, another shot of green or blue, um, measuring it to see how it looks. I'm not really concerned that it matches uh, the figures that are there. In fact, they're in different positions and I want them to make like the, uh, look like they're really working. Put some coveralls on this fellow and it'll, it'll all be kind of measured against uh, the background after it dries and if I feel it's too bright or too uh, distracting, I can easily wash over it and remove some of that color. But my feeling is it's going to dry 
and kind of settle and we'll notice it but not uh, it won't be as bright as it is right now continue to add little bits and pieces um, I'm gonna add some some of that rigging in a moment that comes down from the top of the painting and and uh, joins helps to join the the, the hull of the boat uh, to the sails I'm using a what's called a rigger in fact it's a brush that's designed for painting just this long skinny lines whether they be the rigging of ships or telephone wires or this or that um, it's designed to paint very fine lines and so it's got a very skinny tip and we drag drag it um, over the paper to get uh, tension in a line um, sometimes we let that line break it looks more interesting that way in any case it's one of the things that uh, is common in these sorts of scenes is to see the the rigging of a, of a boat come down Well, you can start to see, you know, how the how the light is settled. I've used some dry brush in the background. Uh, on top of rough paper, you can see how the sparkle is effective. I've used a lot of uh, wet washes to describe the boat. Some very hard edges on the boat and in the shadows. That's uh, to communicate this feeling of uh, intense light, low light, intense light, backlight. And even though it's uh, everything's in shadow, I'm trying to also invoke a feeling of, of glowing color, like light is bouncing back up into the boat, or back up into the figures, and we notice them, we notice the local colors because of that. And I feel that the graded wash, using a wash that transitions, uh, is very helpful in doing that. So I, I, in my painting, I rely on that a lot to use it a graded application. If you're curious about uh, the materials I'm using or uh, other interesting tidbits, I recommend that you read the description. There you can find a link to um, a PDF that I've created around using uh, graded washes or other links to uh, material that might be supplemental to this sort of painting. And uh, you can find a link to my website and a way to, to contact me. So have a look at the description and you should find uh, things that you're looking for. Uh, and anyway, I hope you appreciate and uh, utilize this idea of a graded wash. You can see how it's been effective in this painting. Thank you.